Hi everybody, welcome to Ali Beg ABTV here on YouTube as I look ahead to Aberdeen's season opener against Peterhead at Balmore Stadium. Kick-off is 3 o'clock UK time in a Group A Premier Sports Cup fixture. This is what the table actually looks like after Sterling Albion beat Dumbarton yesterday. We play Dumbarton in mid-week. Hi everybody, a very warm welcome to today's preview show as we look ahead to the game against Peterhead and remember Davy Robb, who sadly recently passed away. If you're watching for the very first time, you're more than welcome. If you like what you see, please feel free to subscribe, jump on board. We've got so much planned for this coming season and look out for some very special one-on-one -on -one interviews coming very soon. Now you're probably wondering, where's my studio? Well, I've come to deepest Austria with the family for a few days, so I thought I'd come outside and make this preview show for you from the hills and the scenery of deepest Austria. Right, let's get on and remember the wonderful Davy Robb. He played 345 games for Aberdeen after signing in August 1965. He scored 98 goals and won two major honours. He sits proudly in the club's top 20 appearances and goals chart. He was, I'm sure you'll agree, a larger-than-life character and will always be fondly known as a cult hero among the fans. Earlier today, I caught up with his former teammate Bobby Clark to remember Davy Robb. Hi Bobby, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me this morning. Um, obviously it was really sad news reaching us yesterday about the passing of Davy. Um, you must have been really shocked. Yeah, it's when it was Joe Harper gave me a call uh, and gave me the, the sad news. No, oh, it was uh, it was it was it was sad uh, because Davy had been a he was a special player. Uh, he, I, I think my first pre-season at Aberdeen was, what, 1965, I think it would be. So that's a long time ago. And it was Davy. Davy was there as well. And I remember this young, young fella, red hair. He was, you'd be, I'd be just, I'd be 19. I think Davy would be about a couple of years younger than me at that time. And um, I don't know what my first thoughts on Davy as a player were. You know, they were... He was kind of rough, I would say rough around the edges was maybe the, the best way to put it. And uh, I remember the, the first game we sort of played together, it was at, they had a public trial. They didn't have pre-season friendlies back then. You played the first team versus the reserves. And uh, I, I was in the reserves with Davey and we actually won 4-2. So it was a good day. I remember, I remember the next the next uh, day and we were, we're sort of talking and, Eddie Turnbull was going on about this. Davy Robb, he, he, I'm going to have him running through brick walls. He'll terrorise defences. And I'm thinking, well, Davy, he wasn't the smoothest. And I'm thinking this. And I, I don't know if I agree with uh, Eddie Turnbull. And I think that was a silly thing. I, think I, I learned, you know, in the in the coming years, that you don't you don't question Eddie Turnbull's judgment of a player because in a couple of years you were saying Davy be one of the the first picks you you ever put in your team. So he was he was just a workhorse, you know. It was the days of it was the days before press you know, pressing became a buzzword. All Eddie's teams pressed very hard. And nobody was better at it than Davy because Davy just his work rate was was fantastic. Oh, no, he was he was a great teammate. I think all the boys. He was different. He was his own person. He was very much his own person, Davy. He wasn't. Uh, uh, he, he. I wouldn't say he, was, he wasn't eccentric, but he was. He, was he, he did all his own things, and uh, but he was very much liked by everyone. I think that would be the thing. He was a good teammate. He's a really good teammate. And of course, he, he worked tremendously hard. Over the years, Aberdeen have had many cult heroes. Would you say he was the original cult hero among the fans? Uh, yeah, I, I think 
I think he was. He, 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 he always entertained one way or the other, whether he was scoring. And he scored a lot. He wasn't, he wasn't, goal scoring wasn't his, his thing, but he, I, I think I, I saw he scored about almost 100 goals in his time. So he, he, he did, he scored goals. Uh, he wasn't a passer, but he did some some great passing things. Uh, and, and I think, and he also fell over the ball, you know. I remember, I remember once we're playing at Ross County, and it was the days before Ronaldo had been had come come, come on to the stage. But Davy was doing all the step overs. It was in their box. He was doing step overs this way, of course. Instead of stepping over the ball and beating the guy, Davy stepped over the ball and fell in the ball, you know. <laughs> but instead of, of course, the crowd kind of all laughed at this, you know. But Davy, instead of what, getting annoyed, he just puts his hand up as if he's claiming for a penalty kick <laughs> when he had fallen over the ball. It was it was t typical Davy. He was he was he, he was a character, and I think these are the things that endeared him to the crowd, you know. I remember a lady we were up at. Uh, it was a, a, a supporters do in Inverness. And this lady said, uh, Davey, I, I think you play better on a wet, muddy field. And Davey sort of looks, and looks at her and says, you know, you could be right, he says, but believe you me, I can play badly on any field. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Davey, you know. He, he just had all these little, he, he didn't, he, did, he took the game seriously, but he, 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 a lot of other things he, he, he took lightly around the game. And I think the crowd liked that. And the crowd, all, crowd always liked somebody who puts in effort. And, uh, and I mean, his, his red hair, his long red hair and his, uh, <laughs> you know, his moustache. You know, Davey was, Davey was Davey. And, uh, and he was a brush. I mean, and, and we everybody called him the brush, you know, uh, and, and that started very early within the, within the team. I, I don't know how it exactly came about. He'll claim it was Basil Brush. Yeah. Other folk might have said, "Ah, you're daft as a brush," you know. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm never sure with Davy. He was just, uh, he, he, he was, he, yeah. And that these are the things that endeared him to the fans. Mm. Mm. And, he, and he definitely, and you know, he had a great career. You know, I mean, he played played two cup finals for us. We won two, one two the cup. He possibly played the driver of cup final that year as well. So he had three cup finals that, that we won. And then, I mean, he, he went to Tampa Bay Rowdies when Tampa Bay Rowdies were getting, was a big team at, at that time. And, 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 and it was the NESL at that time. And then he, uh, he came back and played with Norwich, who were, in the English First Division, which was, uh, you know, the same as the would be the Premier League now, you mm. know. Mm. So Davy went back and forward. I mean, Davy had a great career. So, yeah. Yeah. a good well, player, be, very, yeah. very good player. Eddie Turnbull was, was correct. Mm. He's going to be sadly missed. Uh, Bobby, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your memories of him with us. I really, really appreciate it. No, special man, great teammate, and I'll I'll miss him. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Thank you, Bobby. Have a lovely weekend and hopefully we'll catch up soon. Yep. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. My thanks to the wonderful Bobby Clark for remembering his former teammate and more importantly, his friend, Davy Robb, who sadly passed away. Also, thank you very much for coming on my social channels and commenting and offering your own stories about the brush. Some of them were absolutely fantastic and had me giggling for hours. So many thanks for doing that. Um, I'm going to be projecting what I think will be Aberdeen starting 11 against Peterhead very shortly. But one player who will definitely be missing from the game is Lewis Ferguson. So much talk about what's happening with Lewis at the moment. These are the current headlines. The Daily Record reporting that Lewis Ferguson set for Bologna transfer as Aberdeen to land 3 million for midfield star. Apparently he's in Italy having a medical and having a look around. And Scott Burns, who we all know is very in touch with everything that's going on at Pitodri, he said, Lewis Ferguson, Aberdeen exit edges closer as Don's accept Bologna bid with long-term deal lined up. And from what we can understand, there will be very good add-ons as well. 
I recently caught up with former Aberdeen midfielder Billy Stark to talk about the transfer saga, and this is what he had to say. Well, I don't, I don't think it's helpful, uh, that type of situation, going into a new season where there's speculation about players. Obviously, Calvin was was in the same boat, but that business got done, so the manager knows where he's going with his squad. Uh, obviously, Lewis is still in situ in the, the group, and uh, obviously he's a big player for Aberdeen, so I, I don't think it's it's a helpful situation for anybody, particularly Lewis. Uh, my feeling would be that there will be business done there. Uh, there seems to be a wee bit of interest, a, a fair bit of interest, even from abroad. So, uh, you know, the transfer windows get a fair bit to go yet, and they'll be coming and going. Aberdeen quite rightly held out to get the proper value for Calvin Ramsey. And I think that's probably what they're doing with Lewis Ferguson. So it seems Lewis wants to move on. He's been, a, he's been a good servant to Aberdeen over the last number of years. And uh, I think for everybody's sake, uh, before the window closes, because it, that money will be generated to hopefully bring in new players for the manager. So hopefully that's done pretty quickly. Now, Aberdeen go into today's game with a very impressive 7-1 win against Brooklyn City in midweek. These pictures come courtesy of Brooklyn City Football Club. Many thanks to their media team for providing them with the footage. Oh, 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 and so many of you who were at the game commented on Vicente Bissauer and how well he played. Many of the journalists that were there said he was a key player on the night. So let's have a quick look at what I think will be today's starting 11. So obviously you your thoughts may differ from mine. That's absolutely fine. But this is roughly what I think. I think Mason Hancock will make his debut for Aberdeen today. His competitive debut at left back. I'm expecting Liam Scales to partner our brand new captain, Anthony Stewart. Now, depending whether Johnny or Matty Kennedy plays... I think if Kennedy plays, and I think we'll see Facente getting a little bit further forward and supporting Christian Ramirez. The managers had plenty to say. As always, we will not underestimate the opposition. Very important for him to say that. The main emphasis this League Cup campaign is to score goals, to entertain, and to win games comfortably, and to give the fans something to be excited about. He's certainly been busy in the old transfer window, hasn't he? And I'm sure there'll be one or two more signings to come in 
the coming days and the coming weeks as we look ahead to the end of the transfer window. Now, as we know, we're playing Peterhead today at Balmore Stadium, and I was absolutely thrilled to have caught up with their general manager, Martin Johnston, who spoke to me yesterday, just before the Peterhead lads came in to train, and um, we had a little bit of a chat about the game today at Balmore. This is what he had to say. Martin, thank you so much for joining us today. I know that you guys are really busy in preparation for today's game. Are you ready? As will ever be, Ali. As will ever be. Uh, it's been pretty traumatic. Um, we've got a great team here off the park. So the, 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 the good thing is there's a lot of things to be organised, given that the game is live on television as well. So we've got to accommodate a lot of uh, people we don't normally have to contend with. Um, so that's meant that I've been able to concentrate on other things because obviously um, we were still struggling a wee bit to, 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 to get our, our squad pulled, pulled together as, as, as our other clubs at this moment in time. Sure. So it was a very interesting uh, last 24 hours, let's say, to the least. OK, because I noticed that your chairman has come out in the press and said it's put a little bit of gloom on the occasion. But you guys are going to be OK to put out a full, full strength team? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> It, 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 I mean, obviously, the, the, the definition of full strength yeah. is really for Jim to, to, to determine. Sure. Um, situation with us uh, is that uh, we struggled a wee bit to um, source um, a goalkeeper. Um, obviously, I think with something like 13 players left us at the end of the season. So it was a complete transition uh, at Baltimore. Um, and normally, um, Jim's very good at picking up um, guys who may well have hoped to pick up a, a full-time contract elsewhere and, and, and that hasn't materialised. But I believe the story is the same, the length and breadth of the country, that, uh, you know, quality players um, are, are, are hard to come by because it's, it's, it's not just a simple case of signing guys and, and, and giving them a shirt. Um, they, they have to be able to produce the goods as well as it were. Of course, of course. The great thing is it's a sellout. You're live on television. It's fantastic for the football club to have such an occasion like this. You must be delighted. Absolutely. Um, as I say, as we speak, I think we've got 30, 40 tickets um, still waiting to go. They'll, they'll be shifted. Um, absolutely, 100%. Um, hope, hopefully by three o'clock today so I can pop along and watch our neighbours take on Kilmarnock. Okay. Um, but, um, yeah, um, the whole town is buzzing because... As I said to you the last time I was on your show, um, this is the first time in almost exactly 100 years since Peterhead have uh, played Aberdeen in a senior competitive game. That's no disrespect to Aberdeenshire FA. We've met many times in the Aberdeenshire Cup and the Aberdeenshire Shield, but for a, a, a national competition, um, uh, this is the first time since uh, since 1921, I believe it is. Um, so. Uh, um, and we've got a wee bit of revenge to, 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 to work on as well for that one. Normally, at this point, I'd say good luck, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll just give you a call back on, on Monday and say commiserations. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Martin, listen, I know how busy you are, so I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you, mate. No worries. Good to see you, Ali. And you. There we are. Now, after we finished that chat, Martin quickly jumped in to what is the away team dressing room. I asked him if he would mind jumping in so that we could actually have a look to see where the Dons are going to get trained later today. Here he is. Martin, you've stepped into the away team dressing room for us just to give us a feel for where the boys will be getting changed today. Can you just show us around, please? Yes, indeed, I. It's all set up for uh, the Peterhead squad. We are travelling up. Our guys are all coming in today to do a wee bit extra training um, uh, ahead of the game. They're staying in Peterhead overnight. So this is actually where the Dawn squad will be sitting at five o'clock tomorrow night with their heads in their hands. <laughs> <laughs> we can only <all> hope. <laughs> oh, very nice. Cool. That's great. So can you just do a quick, go and do a quick 360 for me? Uh, yeah, a quick 360. Aye. There's the showers. And the toilets. Very cool. There we go. Brilliant. 
Martin, that's fantastic. Again, thank you so much for coming on today and showing us around. No problems. Ali, if I could maybe just take this opportunity just to say, um, obviously we're, we're, we're welcoming the, the, the Dons fans with open arms. However, parking is an issue. There will be no parking at the stadium. The parking at the stadium is all for pre-booked parking. Okay. So there are ample opportunities to park elsewhere in the town. There are details on the websites. Uh, both Aberdeen and the Peterhead websites have got details of where to park. If the fans could just check that first before they set off so they know that, that exactly what they're doing. So there's, there's limited congestion. That would be most helpful. OK, no problem. We'll make sure that we give that a shout out on the show as well, Martin. Magic. Thank you. Thank you so much for today. All the best, Ali. Thank Bye, you. Bye-bye. There we are. Thank you, Martin, for showing us around what will be Aberdeen's dressing room today at Balmore. Kickoff not that far away. Guys, we are done. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed today's preview. And I think it's only fitting that we end today's programme by remembering Aberdeen's cult hero, Davy Robb, who sadly passed away. Our thoughts are very much with his family. Rest in peace, Davy.